Hello everyone out there, and today I'm out on the streets of London. Why? Because I'm going to give you a tour of uh, this place. This is the uh, Department of Engineering at UCL, and uh, we're going to take you into the Electronic Engineering Department, which is right up the top in the older building, just behind. The front one's our main engineering entrance, that's a new one that's just gone up a couple of years ago. Uh, nice spanking new place, new electric theatres and what have you for you to do what you're studying in and what you're not. And uh, yeah, around this area, before I go in there, we've got um, loads, loads of stuff really. We've got uh, Tottenham Court Road down uh, the road that way, we've got uh, Oxford Street off to the left, top, uh, Camden Town, nice place, uh, over to the right. Uh, Nice books on the uh, bookshop in front for all of your uh, books. Student Union right behind us. Uh, we're in the centre of London. Uh, got a rather school of uh, dramatic art down there. Loads of famous actors go through that place. Sometimes you actually see them about here. Uh, other stuff uh, that's around here, we've got entertainment doors, since that we're in the centre of London. Anything from you know, arts and crafts. To um, you know, museums, theatre, cinema, your clubbing lifestyle at night and uh, during the day now in some places. Got all of your tourist attractions, museums, and what you not. Tons of stuff to do outside of uh, studying and the various clubs and societies as well. Pubs galore, restaurants galore, you name it, we've got it. And uh, yeah, let's go inside and we'll. Show you about the place. So this is one of our uh, lecture theatres in uh, the engineering department, um, used by everyone, not only engineering. We also do get uh, various other uh, guys through here, medical and biochemical and what you not. Um, they have the arts and law and God knows what. It's a uh, fully bookable space but this is where you do your uh, lectures all the lectures are uh, fully recorded we've got cameras up here there's one up there um, provided that the uh, lecturers do remember to switch on their time mics we can get audio as well but generally all the lectures are um, recorded as an example one of the uh, lecture podiums uh, Set up with Windows 7, everything's touch controlled so they can control the uh, sound levels, their inputs, outputs. We've got uh, visualizers, so they can switch in between, do something, you know, visual on the screen. Uh, central projector, some lecture theatres have one projector, other lecture theatres have two. Uh, generally, a huge whiteboard that you'll see in every single one. This one's got a um, dual whiteboard so you've got two that can roll over top of each other as others have got singles some other lecture theatres have got um, touch screens in them I believe now so um, you can do a, uh, uh, an on-screen presentation or we'll touch up your slides as you're going through them everything's air conned you've got a vent at the back uh, vents into the floors and whatever so the temperature's not too bad during the hot sticky weather and uh, yeah not really much else to say in here once you've seen one of these places, you've seen them all. Lots of seating, bench space for everyone, plug sockets underneath all the benches, so you can plug in your laptops and what you're not, or charge up your phone if you want to be cheeky and nick our electric. So, yeah. Let's move on. So, this is our uh, undergraduate teaching lab, and uh, primary function, obviously, for teaching, hence the name. Uh, this is my lab, uh, I'll run this, um, Gerald is also here, he runs this, he uh, looks after his kit as well, so there's two of us, um, and there you go, just panning down the lab as you can see, each bench is more or less the same, so we try and standardise on the kit, um, a lot of this kit you've probably already seen in uh, previous videos, like the uh, TDS uh, 220 uh, TDS 2002B uh, oscilloscope, uh, 60 mega digital oscilloscope, um, Matrix uh, 
MTX3240 signal generators and the uh, power supplies, the Selby and Thunder um, triple output power supplies, the EL302TVs. Um, that's all the standard kit, but we do like to throw in uh, other pieces of kit for you to learn how to use, like uh, we've got a uh, MSO, a uh, mixed uh, signal oscilloscope, rather than the uh, traditional normal oscilloscopes. This one also does. Um, digital as well as four channel uh, bus simulation component testing and so on. That's a Hameg HMO uh, 1024, it's a 100 meg uh, MSO. Uh, two mega two mega uh, storage depth on that compared to the, the bog standard techs which are only a couple of K. So you can do a little bit more stuff. All those, all the HMOs that we got, there's another one up there, we'd love to throw in new bits of kit out there every so often just to get you learning how to use different pieces of kit so when you get out there in the real world you're not going to be uh, you know, overwhelmed by a piece of kit with a million and one buttons uh, same with the uh, the uh, signal generators we also throw in occasionally an extra one or uh, swap them around so that's an arbitrary function generator GWN tech one uh, it's a AFG 2112 it's just a low end arb but um, it's good enough to give you an idea of how to use an arbitrary uh, waveform generator. You can generate your own waveforms, upload them into the machine and get them to output them. So, yeah. Uh, basically, while you're in here, you do a one and a half to six hour lab sessions. It depends on the experiment. Some of them run for, like I say, one and a half hours, which is about half a session. The other ones run for three hours, a full session. You've got others which are six hours they run across multiple sessions uh, depends on the experiment and complexity uh, start off with basic building blocks um, things like uh, you know basic component uh, recognition uh, find out what voltage and currents are you're looking at resistors capacitors diodes transistors fets uh, all num manner of op amps and so on and you look at systems so uh, you don't only look at the components and testing components themselves and using components you also look at systems so things like um, uh, so about modulation techniques uh, instrumentation so things like uh, three, uh, the uh, triop amp instrumentation amplifiers or single instrumentation amplifiers differential circuits and so on uh, tons and tons of kit, so you do that sort of stuff in the first and second year. Second year is more of a systems approach, I because mean, you start to deal with things like transmission lines, uh, uh, microwave interference and uh, polarisation, diffraction and so on, uh, optical systems and um, things like that. You start to use uh, simulation packages like uh, Multisim, um, MATLAB, SPICE, so on the uh, CST that's all in there for some microwave studio and all that and uh, you start looking at uh, more um, embedded stuff like the uh, Altier FPJ boards that we've got down there you've got nano there got some kit laid out there that's from when someone did a video presentation for uh, I think it was for a museum and they wanted a, a background of funky electronic stuff doing some crazy things in the background so we set all that up didn't actually do much, didn't show much, there's more interested in the actual presentation. But, you know, these photographers love uh, little flashing lights in the background when they do electronic stuff, so it's set all that up. Anyway, that's all that kit. Um, kit down on the bench here is more advanced uh, stuff, this sort of thing that you get your hands on in your third and fourth year projects. Third year projects are done on your own, uh, fourth year projects are done um, in groups. So we've got kit like, uh, there's another MSO, that's a Tektronix one, that's a high-end one, up to um, it's a, a 16 channel MSO, 100 megahertz, 2.5 giga samples a second, uh, 4 channel, blah, 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 blah. We've got a number of um, plug-in modules to go in here to do different uh, decoding, uh, triggering and uh, what you're not. Uh, so, so that's the MSO 3014, we've also got some other ones of those knocking about, we've got a couple of them. Um, reasonably high-end uh, spectrum analyzer, that's up to 3 gigs. Um, 
the Agilent uh, E4403B, another Agilent piece of kit as a bitalyzer for um, uh, testing optical networks, things like that. We, you're looking at bit analysis basically, we use it for optical, you're looking at a uh, bit error. That's the Agilent uh, 86130A, we've got um, other Agilent kit there. Uh, this is all donated to us. The, the Agilent stuff was all donated, which is quite nice of them, ages ago. It's been really useful. We've got uh, light wave transmitters, uh, uh, data receivers and so on. So you can get to play with that in your third and fourth years. Uh, not only your optically type stuff, it's also RF. So we've got RF um, network analyzers. That's, uh, that's one of our DPOs there, MDO. 41046, so 6 gig on the uh, spectrum analyzer, 1 gig on the uh, scope side of things, uh, 5 gig example a second, shitloads of memory, so you can do real time spectrum analysis as well as time, display everything on the screen and a digit on top, so and, uh, you can all trigger off all, off the RF, and trigger off RF while you're viewing the um, digital or the uh, uh, and you know the time for the the, uh, for the scope stuff uh, yeah so we've got all that stuff a transmitter tester up there some of this kit has gone walkies out of the lab as you can see there are some empty spaces over there and right there meant to have a optical spectral analyzer and a optical network analyzer right there but they've been pilfered into research labs since that this is the summer as you can see there's always junk in this lab uh, we love storing junk we love electronic junk so it gives you the opportunity to tear stuff apart uh, look inside pieces of kit um, do your own tear downs find out how things are put together it's, you know it's quite important I mean a lot of that sort of stuff is actually left out and um, yeah it's really important to, to find out how things are actually you know put together it's all really good about building circuits all that sort of stuff but what happens when you've got to connect them together and uh, yeah, start joining blocks together, it's a little bit more of a challenge, so we like to have that sort of stuff. And um, always useful if you need spare parts or anything, you can always hack apart the, uh, the old kit that we got. And in your third and fourth year, do uh, projects, um, that's a laser room, um, what do you call it, it's one of those things spins around measures the room, I forget what it's called now. Uh, it will come to me in a moment. Uh, laser room scanner, that's all it is, it's a room scanner. So it's a mobile one, based around the Adreno. Uh, that was a third year project that one of our third years done. Uh, that's a um, optical touch um, bezel. So that's the sort of thing that you get around the large touch screens. Um, so you can optically uh, position where your finger is. I think that was a multi-position one that they actually did. So you could use, do a yeah, use a multi, it's broken up into multiple segments. And you can use two um, two people can use it at once. That's all very fun. That's a four-year project. Like I said, four-year projects all done in groups. Third years are in singly. Uh, other kit that we got in here, uh, complete mixed. Uh, we've also got the Elvis boards. Uh, down here, hidden away in the cabinets. Down here, we've got the Elvises from uh, National Instruments. Uh, various plug-in modules down the bottom. We've got uh, FPGA stuff. So uh, we love uh, FPGAs. Uh, digital. You can do everything with software. Upload it to your FPGA and do whatever the hell you got to do with it. It's so nice. Component recycling. Yep, we do recycle components. We are trying to be as green as possible. Uh, all our little book library data sheets and what have you, Harwitz and Hill, We've got three Harwitz and Hills at the bottom, they were never touched last year. So much information is down there, okay, but it's never touched. That's the digital age for you. Everyone will rather use their tablets and Google to get all of your uh, stuff. Right down the back here, little make area soldering stations, uh, UV boxes, got some old projectors there that can be pulled apart for LCD panels, control circuitry, etc. and fans and what you not, the optics. 
it's all been can be all hacked apart um, soldering wise hot plates various handheld soldering irons all various tips uh, rework station over the back microscope for doing your SMD rework uh, hot air reflow uh, hot air rework station if you want to take off or uh, rework uh, any SMD stuff yes um, we do have uh, fume extraction unfortunately everyone doesn't seem to realize the dangers of um, soldering they like to uh, put the hoods up out of the way they are quite chunky ones because we do get quite a bit of soldering in there so we like to grab a lot of air around that area and uh, also used when using things like uh, IPA like yeah so where someone's left it out on the bench there um yeah so um this is where you do all your uh, undergraduate uh, circuitry and everything and what else can i say about this room not a great more except that we do run scenarios they're basic basically projects that's i don't know if you notice we've got this cable strung up around the lab that was for a scenario for a second year scenario basically scenarios are mini week-long projects this one was a uh, based around a uh, telephone line and we had a number being simulated that's been dialed and uh, numbers are buzzing along the line and students had to um, inductively couple to the line and uh, build circuits in order to do that to uh, decode the information running down the line without actually uh, you know chopping the wire in half or anything like that so you're looking at inductive coupling essentially it's <laughs> how to hack a telephone uh, line but um yeah we've got so much information that you can gain from that things like uh, uh various amplifiers various pickups uh, inductive loops and so on and uh yeah all very interesting that's a big screen fully touch screen for doing uh, presentations and uh etc and if anyone needs any help and or they've got a presentation that they need to do and you can draw over your presentation to make amendments as you're doing it or highlight areas it's all very useful we used to have a projector there on that end but we dumped that in favor of the screen the big huge touch screen is much much nicer whiteboard city <laughs> yeah someone's been working out something over there on the board crap knows what it is and uh down here we've got uh, another junk pile down the corner old kit that we're getting rid of I've got uh, RF sources that would go in which are well out of calibration, they tend to break down very uh, frequently, uh, curve tracers, uh, mole units, uh, sweep generators and so on, all going out at some point, uh, over here, probably seen that before in, a, in my uh, PC and PCB video, that's a, a TTAC uh, quick circuit 7000 for uh, routing out uh, PCBs. Drilling, routing, isolating does the lot. Uh, other stuff, scenario wise, also did um, a muscle uh, monitoring scenario where we, where students managed to hook themselves up to electrical circuits. You know, that was all battery driven, so pretty safe no one is going to get electrocuted from that but basically attaching electrodes to their arms and uh, monitoring the the uh, electrical impulses and signals when you move your arm you get you and your muscles start working uh, so looking at monitoring muscle strength and things like that. that was a good scenario for the second year all instrumentation that was based on which you learn it in the first year so labs are all they do flow and scenarios do flow um, you learn the basics and you build on the basics and you slowly work your way up and that's about it for this room really so not going to do much else in here I'll show you the nano lab upstairs and if I can get into the any any of the research groups that allow me to video in their labs I might actually show you in a uh, couple of labs I don't know if anyone will be about because it's early morning as we all know you students love bedtime and trying to get you up in the morning is a right pain in the ass, especially getting you in for lectures. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in a minute. And I'm out in the lift lobby at the moment, so it might be a bit noisy, but we've got various displays and what have you, and uh, cabinets showing your history of the department. 
Um, so we've got uh, an example of um, uh, Barlow's work, Harold Barlow, who's a uh, head of department here, I believe. That's a uh, circular wave guy. That's a bit of research that he was working on. Um, there we go. Pender, Sir John Pender. That's an example of his submarine cable. Sort of thing that you would uh, connect up onto the oceans, lay down onto the uh, ocean floor bed to do all your data communication. And there he is. That's the sort of thing that will be joining the countries together, but that's all been phased out now in favour of this. There we go, fibre. Same sort of thing about fibre. And a uh, little bit of copper in there as well, I think. What else? Uh, Mr. Fleming down there, one of his vows. Fleming's the person who kicked off this department. That's one of his vows that he uh, actually created. So you've probably heard of Fleming, Pender and Barlow. So we've got a lot of history around here. Another cabinet uh, containing some busts. You can see that guy there, Mr. Marconi. So he was uh, here for a while. Uh, Mr. Fleming again, down there, his, his bust and one of his uh, prototype uh, valves. Oh, there's a major piece of history. And you see loads of valves and stuff like that around here. Seems that he was our first professor and uh, he did a lot of his work here. Tons of the stuff, ancient old school, prototype ones, all the way down through it, and Pender's Electrical Laboratory, one of his one of his little books there. BT Mobile, nice brick. Example there of another old one. More cable, microwavey stuff. Vows, like I said, there's tons of history around here. Every so often, just take a wander about. You never know what you see in these cabinets. Always change all the time. Looks like we lost the lights down there. That's not good. I have to sort that out. Here are examples of microwave wave guides and what have you. And Loads of old valves, lots of prototype ones, first time use, and so on. Right then, well, I said I'd try and get you into a research lab, and I have. This is one, this is the uh, Conit lab in the uh, electronic engineering department, and uh, what they do here is, well actually it's a good, a good lab to get into, to see everything what we do. Because it's a uh, pretty mixed bag. What they do here is a little bit of computing, a little bit of optical, a little bit of RF, a little bit of embedded, um, a little bit of radio. Uh, it's everything basically, it's, it's, a, it's mixing all technologies together to um, push the boundaries again so um, a lot of what they do here is uh, on post there if you can see that was a project that they did uh, radio over fiber up to 60 gigs um, other ones uh, long fiber distribution links and what you know optical networks for shared uh, computer memory and what have you and uh, yeah, like I said, it's completely mixed. We've got uh, loads of uh, optical kit on the benches, little mini uh, optical bench there, optical table, weighty steel board, uh, XY beds just there for a uh, couple of fibers and what you not. Uh, RF links, mixers, amplifiers. There's all your embedded stuff going out to various 
RF outputs, uh, multiplexing the output into RF and then that all goes into uh, fiber sources and uh, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, there's uh, an experiment that's just come to an end, that's why I've mainly been allowed in here because all these experiments are all at an end now. So, uh, not too much sensitive stuff going on in here at the moment. A uh, couple of bits and bobs, what have we got? A uh, ILX Lightwave... Uh, looks like fiber optic sources there, were uh, laser sources. Position of fiber optic source, uh, 1545.4.32 nanometer outputs all the way up to uh, 1558.17, 1555.75, and so on. So you can mix different uh, wavelengths into single fibers. That's what they're doing in the uh, ONG group actually. Which I can't get into that one at the moment, but they like to look at how much light and how many wavelengths you can fit down a fibre, trying to push the fibre to its maximum and what have you. In here, it's all dealing with the signals, uh, it's working with that tech that they've been working on. So, there you go, there's a nice little setup there. Mix of uh, optical on RF, so it's getting the RF down the uh, cables. Another bits of kit, we've got uh, some Yakagawa stuff, uh, pattern pulse generators, AP9950s, got a few of them. Uh, Infinium uh, Digital Communication Analyzer, basically that is, it's a bit like a scope, except it's got uh, plug-in modules, so you can analyze various different um, inputs, whether it's uh, just any got RF, You've got one there, it's not too cool, so I imagine it's set up as a um, uh, a uh, optical component analyzer at the moment. So you've got optical inputs, uh, optical data outputs as well, and uh, same with the RF optical RF inputs and outputs. Uh, light wave converter just there, so converting RF, RF into the light. Oh no, optical into RF. Um, that's a uh, sort of HP when they used to do stuff uh, like that. Now it's all adjuvant. So one one nine eight two A. Yeah, we've got loads of bits and bobs, uh, various uh, modular systems, modular wrapped up systems there. So they're all individual cards all form a particular function. Tons of fibre all on the reels, yeah, hundreds of kilometers of fiber. Simulate your, all of your uh, optical networks and what you're not. Uh, let's see, what have we got down the back here? Yeah, we have, can you see that? We've got uh, some um, radio transmitters there. And down there, there's the other one, there's the dish. So we've got the uh, transmitter and receiver. So we're converting um, RF into optical. Uh, RF out with various mixes and what have you. Converters converted down into optical through polarizers. Back up into, uh, there you go, I've got a um, bit of computing kit there. What's that? That is a optical in ethernet out and it's all routed up to various uh, pieces of kit so you've got um, transmitting uh, ethernet wireless so you've got wi it's probably it's, uh, Wi-Fi yeah that'll be a uh, Wi-Fi uh, transmitter receiver so like a Wi-Fi network maybe or a uh, I don't know it could be a mobile network I haven't got a clue at the moment because all the kits are off and there's no one in here anyway what have we got down here we've got a Rosen Sprouts uh, signal generator uh, does, can you see what frequency that goes up to? I uh, can't see yet. 43.5 gig from 1 gig to 43.5 gigahertz. That's a uh, SMF 100A. So, yeah, we've got tons of kit in here. And as a uh, undergrad in your fourth year project, 
or even in your third year project so you never know depends on what you pick and what options you pick you may actually be working in here on some of this kit so you you never know quite what you're doing until you actually start studying and here and uh, yeah this is one example of one of the labs that you might actually be in for your final year projects so uh, more um, Ekigawa stuff there, error detectors uh, ah, we've got um, advanced recirculating loop control unit piece of kit that uh, we made here at UCL there you go. we do produce our own stuff that's all made in house and yeah right what I'll do is I'll take you on a uh, I wonder to see if I can get into anywhere else I'll probably get into the chamber the undercut chamber upstairs and I'll budge into the nano lab as well since I've got a key for that room there's an undergrad you might want to do some nano stuff right, let's go for a wander all right so here we are in the uh, anechoic chamber room and uh, basically this is for testing all your RF uh, devices your uh, transmitters receivers antennas and so on here we go as you can see it's fully rams up you got your uh, microwave absorption material your ram on all the walls and it's all screen shielded down the back there that's our, um, where you place your antenna so that's a rotating uh, platform uh, you mount your uh, say your patch antenna in the front of that and you can rotate it in all directions and you can plot the uh, response depending on what frequencies and what RF signals are actually transmitting to it which is all coming from uh, yeah, it's a transmitter head and that can be all uh, rotated it's all on a mobile stage along with uh, the receiver yeah so if any of you are interested in doing any uh, microwave stuff this is where you test all of your uh, devices and uh, someone's already doing some tests there with something or another god knows what it is but, uh, yep now we're on the go uh, outside of this room kit wise this is where it's all controlled from and you've got a control desk there with various cameras so you can see what's going on inside the chamber while you're doing your uh, measurements that's why you don't want to get yourself you won't get a dose of radiation or anything and there we have it that's the automated uh, measurement system automated, micro automated microwave measurement system the MI2097 uh, the MI4190 that's for your position controller so you can position your stages uh, vector network analyzer up to 40 gigahertz down there that's a power amplifier unit that's Vector Network Analyzer, the Rosen Swartz uh, ZMB40, goes from 10 to 40 gigs. And that's all passed through, you've got a patch panel down there, so everything is all fully sealed. Basically, it's a huge microwave oven. That's all this is. And uh, yeah, there you, go. you can see profile view of the uh, RAM there, it's a specific size for absorbing the uh, microwaves and uh, stops any microwaves from being reflected back so not only does it screen it also stops reflections and uh, everything else so you can get a nice proper pure um, characterization of the your transmitters and your receivers and there we have it all right and this is really the final lab that i'm going to show you because i'm running out of power on the old camera because i'm mobile with it uh, this is the nano lab but this is where all branches of engineering more or less all coalesce we've got uh, a lot of chemical materials electronics a uh, little bit of mechanical and so on everything electronic on the small nano scale so we've got a hell of a lot of kit in here we've got uh, various controllers scanners to scan various devices you can see that one down there um, what have we got uh, there we go we've got a spectrometer 
unit just there for you can do spectroscopy in here various mics probe stations and so on that's an actual factor printer just there for doing various printing out various structures We've got some samples up the top can we see anything there Ooh. no we can't they're all sealed up at the moment unfortunately yes yeah, so this is the place where we do absolutely everything on the uh, nano scale this is only one of the labs and it's mainly for characterizing devices that have been made in our clean rooms we've got various uh, uh, AFMs and so on and so forth so various pieces of scanning equipment like I said uh, over here we've got uh, yeah let's have a look at a probe station so yeah, down there, it's a Keyfly, uh, I think that's a source measure, yeah, semiconductor characterization system, it's a uh, 4200, and uh, let's have a look in here, yeah, there we go, there's a uh, probe station, I don't know if you can see that too well, because it is in a blackout cabinet, there's a one microscope to align your sample on the uh, Base down there, you've got some probes down here where you'd uh, probe your sample and so you can characterize it. And uh, if you are studying here, then you will be using that kit as a part of your, if you're a second year undergraduate. You do actually make a, uh, a diode, I think it's a uh, shocky diode. And you actually come up here to um, characterize it. So this room was intended mainly as a MSc and uh, masters teaching but uh, a lot of undergraduates come through here now as well where nano is um, making itself known in the market now nano is here to stay and it is being done at this very second so let's move it on all right then so that basically sums it up for this place um, other stuff that goes on apart from um you know, all your study and everything. There's loads of enjoyable activities around uh, around here. You do get trips out. Um, I think you go out to a lodge at some point during the um, uh, during the first year. Okay, so you can do a little bit of team building stuff there. Um, other things is competitions galore. I had a um, PCB based competition, uh, basically design a circuit to do a particular function and what have you, and that was done in um, uh, that was done with um, Newbury, yeah, the PCB house, uh, Newbury Electronics, I think it is. Is it Newbury Electronics or Newbury Circuits or something like that? Anyway, I'll give you the link further down so you can check that out. Uh, basically, building a circuit, and here's a big cash prize, you know, for the uh, best idea and to get it produced. Uh, other ones was the uh, Arm Internet of Things competition, basically. Uh, they came in they said yeah here's a, some funding here's some sponsorship and what have you go ahead and make whatever you want and um, here's here's your prize and what have you and um, yeah stuff like that so there's also other bits and bobs going on you've got the Fleming Society they're always doing stuff that's basically running this lab and it's a hack space environment essentially or a build environment Anything that you want to do, your own projects, things like that, you can do within the Fleming Society and you can use our kit to do it with. So, you know, there's plenty of stuff going on. There's always, you know, various other societies and clubs and what have you, recreational stuff going on all around this place. So, um, yeah, I'll leave you with that and I'll see you next time.